The pressure emitting from the two groups was immense. One wrong word or action might make the already fearsome looming presence break out and swallow them whole. However, they were unaware of what Leo thought. Right now, the people in front of him had put the students he was responsible for in danger. Leo, when we were down there, there was an incredibly strong beast. For now, I think Quinn and Fex are safe, but I don't know how long they will survive. They need help now, Forden said. After hearing these words, Leo's grip around his hilt weakened. It worked. With that, Leo continued to walk into the forest while also carefully stepping his feet over a large root going across the floor. All they needed to do now was wait, hoping Fex and Quinn could return safely. After waiting for an hour, Leo finally returned, and this time he wasn't alone. By his side were both Fex and Quinn. Layla had run up to greet them, and the others were happy to see them as well. "'I've made my decision,' Leo said. "'I'm going to cancel the expedition and return to the Academy.' "'Are you sure?' Faye replied. "'Judging from what the travelers told us, the Dalkey settlement seems to be abandoned.' "'No,' Leo replied immediately. "'When I went down there, I could sense it. "'There is still something there, and it's at least the power of a four-spike Dalkey.' "'Only Leo knew the truth, that the energy that was emitting from the being "'was similar to both Fex and Quinn. "'The winners are as follows.' So will the following students please come to the front? Vorden Blade, Layla Monroe, Sia Green, P.O. Blank, Logan Green, Fex Seg, and finally, Quinn Talon. How did they get the top marks? Our group managed to scan around 15 different plants and three new beasts. Are they saying they scan more than that? A student complained with a frown. They must have done that, otherwise why were they called up? Another replied. The students had been called and arrived at the front but instead of looks of admiration and jealousy, they were all stared down with looks of hatred. Seeing that the students' anger still hadn't been quelled, Faye herself decided to take some action, based on some information she had found out earlier. "'Listen up, all of you. There's a reason why these students here have been selected as the winners of today's event.' She rummaged through the crate for scanners that had accumulated behind them until she found one in particular. "'This scanner here is from Logan, a student.' At the time, each of these students had discovered something worth a lot more points than any beast or plant would ever be. After pressing a button on the scanner, a 3D holographic model appeared from the scanner. It showed a recreation of the town that Logan had managed to get on his scanner, the one he had made before entering the tunnels below. As you can all see, this right here is a Dalky base. It looks like they had arrived on this planet before us. This is the reason why we are leaving, not just because there are some powerful beasts on this planet... Everyone understood that. While looking around, Quinn noticed that the soldiers were busy gathering their things. The same couldn't be said for the civilians who lived in the treetop homes. They stood there with worried looks on their faces, peeking from above. "'Why aren't they packing their things?' Quinn asked. "'What do you mean? These people have nowhere to go,' Layla replied. "'They probably spent all the money they had to move here. Even if the military did allow them to use the teleporters and head back to Earth, they would only be made homeless with no shelter or way to earn credits. But if the soldiers leave this place, then there will be no one to protect them from beast attacks, Quinn replied. Layla remained silent when Quinn said this, and Vorden simply placed his hand on his shoulder. They were both aware of the fate of these people. While Quinn was a little naive, while the students walked through the teleporters, a young girl who looked only around the age of five started to wave her hand goodbye to the students unaware of what was happening. This world needs to change. The people at the top need to come crumbling down, and when I'm strong enough, I'll come back for you, Quinn said, although he was aware that by that time, it would probably be too late. Ha <laughs> ha, didn't I leave some basic treasure of mine behind? I believe it was a set of armor. However, whoever entered the tower might have taken a vital piece. I did leave it there as a reward. Let's just hope they didn't choose the area that covers the crown jewels. As the man walked over to the podium, which wasn't encased in a metallic cylinder, as he looked down, he blinked and raised a brow. Now, out of all the items available for them to get, why on earth would they choose to take the ring? The man thought to himself, rather confused. He then walked over to the other five podiums that were covered in the strange metal casing. As he placed his fingertips on the cold outside, in an instant they seemed to react and started to vibrate. Each one of them went back into the ground, revealing the pieces of armor that were once there. The helmet allowed most of his face to be seen. It had two spiraling red horns on top, with a thin piece of metal that went down to the nose. 
When stepping outside, he had expected one of two things. A parade of people would be there to welcome him back, or a big fight would be taking place. But he saw neither of those things. Instead, all that was left was an abandoned town. Finally, he came across something that looked a little interesting. It was a strange human-sized beast that looked like it had been killed not too long ago. The reason why he found it interesting, though, was that he could sense strange energy from it similar to his own. Now why would a blood crystal have been left behind with a beast? Seeing this, he felt the same energy as the beast. He thought that may be his awakening was an accident. The man continued to walk out of the town into the tunnels. The sword was now wrapped around his back, using the chains to hold it onto his chest piece of armor. A step was taken out of the tunnel and into the sunlight. The man was surrounded by nature, and the rays of sunlight shot through the trees and leaves. They were touching both the skin on his hands and the open area on his face. However, unlike Quinn and Fex, there was no reaction to the man. My skin's a little itchy. It would have been nice to have that ring. Otherwise, I might develop a rash of some sort. He complained as he scratched the front of his hand. Ah! A scream was suddenly heard coming from his right. Immediately, without thinking about it, he started to dash in the direction of the scream. Eventually, he could see a little girl just by a river, but she wasn't alone. A large snake, nearly four times the size of the girl, was on her body with its head held high, looking at her. The snake dashed with its head leading forward. With nothing else to do, the girl closed her eyes and screamed once more as she felt like her life was over. When no pain was felt, she decided to open her eyes again. The snake was no longer there. It had disappeared entirely, and instead, standing in its place, was a man in strange red armor. "'It's okay,' the man said. "'The big snake is gone and won't bother you any more.' Looking at the girl, he noticed that there were a few cuts on her body. The worst wound was the one on her knee. It was severely scraped, and blood was being drawn from it. The man grabbed her leg and looked at it carefully. "'It looks quite bad, but I should be able to help you with that.' He then spat on both of his hands and started to rub them together. "'Trust me, my spit is like magic.' He then placed his spit-covered hands on top of the knee, holding it down. When the man let go of her knee, the wound had completely disappeared. "'Thank you, sir. You must have the ability to heal,' she said. "'Ability?' the man replied, confused. "'What's your name?' she asked. "'You can call me Arthur.' Just then, the smile that was on the girl's face only seconds ago dropped. She started pulling on Arthur's arm hard. "'Arthur, me and you are friends, right?' Arthur nodded in response. "'Then please, you have to help me. My family. Everyone here is in trouble. The soldiers, they went away. I don't know why. But they left us all here, and shortly after there was an attack.' Arthur could see this was tough for her. She looked extremely young, barely older than five. He then picked her up with one hand and brought her close to his chest. Sniffing his nose into the air, he could smell it. "'Don't worry, I know where they are.' A sweet smell entered his nose, a scent he remembered vividly. The smell of blood. Hi, Quinn here. Wondering what happens next? If you want to jump the queue and unleash all episodes, click on the link here and install the Pocket FM app.